Hello everyone, hoping you're having a fantastic day. I'm La Chang of Think Global Logistics. Today, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to move air freight. If you're a pro at this, you probably know it. So bear with us or tune out and go watch some videos of cats or something. So before we get into the five tips, if you can like and subscribe, that would be fantastic for me and the team here. Why do you want to move air freight? Traditionally speaking, when people use air freight, it's usually due to the shorter transit times and when something is required urgently, last minute and high value. So tip number one, air freight isn't cheap. Okay, this is the reason why 95% of the freight is moved by sea freight. So when people move air freight, for the reasons which are highlighted in the introduction, it comes at a very high cost. You always pay by the kilo compared to sea freight where you pay for the whole container space or if you're moving less than a container low mode, you're paying for a cubic meter worth of space. So if you're looking for air freight and cheap, forget about it, you know, go to sea freight. Be prepared for the cost and understand clearly why you want to move via air freight. Tip number two, a freight forwarder such as us or anyone in the game of delivering that service to you will charge you by the chargeable weight. We have some videos explaining this, but I'll go through it quickly here again for you. What chargeable weight simply means is the greater of two, actual weight or volumetric weight. Whichever is greater, that becomes the chargeable weight. So actual weight is pretty simple. You put your freight on a scale or however you measure it, whatever that weight is, that is the actual weight. Volumetric weight, how do you calculate that? Well, very simply, first you need to work out your dimensions of your package, lengthwise, widthwise, and heightwise in meters. And that multiplying these three items together, you're gonna get a cubic meter. In air freight, you gotta multiply by 167. And that will give you the volumetric weight with respect to air freight. So then you weigh it up. Well, my actual weight is 200. My volumetric weight is 300. So in this scenario, your chargeable weight is 300, i.e. volumetric weight. If the situation was reversed, your actual weight was 300 and your volumetric weight was 200, guess what? Your chargeable weight is the actual weight now. It's 300 kilos. Make sure you understand this when you have something to be moved, work out what is the actual chargeable weight so that you don't get caught out thinking, well, oh, well this only weighs 50 kilos, why are you charging me for 100? Well, you volumed out, you see, this is why. With respect to air freight, just like with sea freight, like any freight, always be considerate and be conscious that it runs in seasons. Things, for example, leading up to Christmas, that's a busy season, right? Any holidays, a busy season. Um, and um, school holidays or public holidays, these are busy seasons. So naturally speaking, more people are traveling during these seasons. And as a result, capacity usually fluctuates quite a bit. Air freight moves in two forms, right? In two types of aircraft. A freighter aircraft, which simply means there are no passengers. It's just a whole plane worth of cargo. The other option is passenger aircraft, which is more prevalent in supply, which means that passengers are on the top, freight is on the bottom along with all the baggage and what have you. If it's a busy season or more people are traveling on that flight, guess what? The captain is always going to dump your freight. They're going to choose passenger over your freight. What may take maybe two, three days might stretch out to seven days because your cargo might, might not get loaded for a week. Be prepared for that. Speak to a reputable freight forwarder. That person should give you enough options and explanation of the market conditions so you can make an informed decision. Pricing, the most critical part. Air freight is already expensive, so you wanna make sure that you go into it with your eyes wide open. Most air freight quotes, well, any quotes in our industry for that matter, is quite complicated, okay? It doesn't need to be. We don't do that here in TGL. We make it very simple, but unfortunately, a lot of our competitors, they're overcomplicated. Just ask them. All I wanna know is the total price and this is what you will charge me. Very important. Once they tell you that, make sure they confirm it in writing to you. So if they quoted you $1,000, this is the only way you can be assured. Through that confirmation, you will be paying $1,000. Because if you don't, you're gonna get caught out because there are a lot of games and there are a lot of fees that are usually variable in quotes that you as maybe not so seasoned in moving freight may not be aware of. And it's gonna again come back and buy you on the rear end. So don't get caught out. Tip number five. Well, this is gonna be quite a self-explanatory one, especially if you're new to the game. Speak to a reputable freight forwarder. 
such as us, because we're going to have your best interest at heart. We're going to take the time to learn and understand why it is you want to do what you're doing. Then we're going to tell you what is the best way to move that piece of freight as quickly as possible and in the controlled environment where you understand your costs clearly. Don't get caught up in all of the slogan and jargons that some freight forwarders may throw at you. Right? Always cut through that um, noise by always understanding, hey, my freight needs to go from here and my freight needs to go to there. And needs to get there by this time, please give me options and give me a final cost of moving this under that work scope. Always make your request as simple as possible so that you get a simple response back. Don't get distracted. Once you get distracted, become subjective, you're gonna lose your focus and that's when you're gonna get caught out and with, uh, well, that's when you're gonna get caught out with nasty surprises, okay? Speak to a freight forwarder who is experiencing moving air freight, right? And they're going to give you the options. So again, very important to give you the power of making that informed decision. Did I say five tips, guys? I did. Well, I'm gonna give the guys one more bonus optional round or optional tip. Understand what freight you are moving. For example, is it general cargo, which simply means just run-of-the-mill cargo, or is it dangerous cargo? Perfume, alcohol, they all got alcohol content on it, right? So that could be classified as dangerous cargo. The conditions of moving that by air freight can be very different. So be conscious of what you are moving and making sure you understand whether it's dangerous goods or not. If it's dangerous goods and you're already moving it, you should know that every dangerous cargo or that dangerous element to your freight should have its own material safety handling sheet, also known as the MSTS sheet. Within that sheet is what tells everyone who touches this freight what the DG component of that freight is. And in that sheet, there will be a transport section which will tell you whether that is moved as DG cargo or not as DG cargo. Some dangerous goods cannot move on passenger flights. You have to go on a freighter plane where only freight is moved because they want to keep that away from human beings. That will always come at a higher cost and lesser options because there's only so many freighter planes flying between point to point compared to passenger flights. So that's about it. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Again, if you want to know more, reach out to us, we're here to guide you, we're here to hold your hand, we're gonna make things easy where you feel in control at all times. My name is La Chang and I'm from Think Global Logistics.